Welcome to another Gamma Partner Artist Feature Interview. Today we speak with Arno Carstens. Arno is an acclaimed musician and fine artist out of South Africa. He played in an iconic rock band in South Africa in the 90s, moved into a solo career, and now sells his fine art both physically and digitally. I think you're going to enjoy this conversation. All right, so very excited to have an old friend now, Arno Carstens, with us today. Arno, how are you? Is a, how are you? I'm going to briefly introduce you, but then I'm going to get you to go right back right back to your, you know, origin as like Arno as a child running around in South Africa up until this point. But Arno is a fine artist, a musician, gamma partner artist, many things. He wears many hats, but I'll let you tell your story, Arno. It's lovely to see you, by the way. Love seeing you again, man. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, I grew up in a very interesting time. Um, so... <clears throat> I was the youngest of four brothers and um, we lived in a small town called Wooster in the wine area where, where they called the Boerland is where they make all the wine. My dad was a big rugby player. He played against, I think the, the, the Barbarians and the All Blacks. Ah, I've actually got the tie, but um, <clears throat> so and then, uh, so, and I was the youngest of four brothers, of course, and I, I was the art, uh, the arty one, or just not very um, into edu uh, <clears throat> anything educational or sporty. So I found my groove in singing in the choirs and spending lots of time at the art school. And then I, I, I because of my brothers and listening to all the music they're listening to. Um, I became very aware of music and I became snobbish in my music uh, outlook. And I've realized the music that was playing on radio was, was really not good. And I thought I could write better music, um, which I then, <clears throat> in my own head, I thought I, I was doing. Uh, so, and that was a great, great motivation to, to uh, just keep on writing music. And then, um, but then my head was totally much more into doing a fine art, right? And, uh, and I thought I was going to go do that, but then I went to the army and then I went to the graphic art. I studied graphic art. I wasn't, but I wasn't paying enough attention because I wanted to party more. Then we, <clears throat> then I went to go do life of machine mining, which is basically print, printing wine bottles labels and chicken <clears throat> chicken can labels or what 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 whatever and um then we started the band spring rock new girls we were um, around 22 to the age of 22 23 and then that made more money than my day job and that's what i've been doing for i did that seven years the new girls then we broke up then I did solo work, and that was really successful as well. <clears throat> and then, um, basically, I started spending less time partying and more time um, um, painting. So um, it was a refreshing kind of break. So that's how I keep myself busy now, writing music <clears throat> and painting constantly. But I've had a break now for a month because we just moved house. I've heard. And congratulations on the move. You're in there now. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. it's still very, uh, it's basically a big cloud. The floors are white. The roof is white. It's awesome. But um, <clears throat> this is almost one of the last rooms that I just got to, I think I've just, well, I just painted right now, so I'm starting right now again. So let's go back. You said you were the arty one out of four brothers. You were growing up in South Africa, would have been in, correct me if I'm wrong, like early 80s. What, what was that like? How did you... How did you know... How did you feel creative? How did you know that music or art was going to be your passion? Because it, um, 
if you are tickled by comic books and comedy and movies, you, you always react to the things that surprise you. It's like, wow, oh, no, oh, oh, oh it breaks your heart. And I think that's a kind of an addiction because it's, it's, it affects your soul, right? If you, if you, if you get into it. So it's a kind of a magic that is, you can't, you know, music, it is so many beautiful things about it. You can't touch it, yet it can touch you so much. And, um, and, and, and of course, it's a way of escapism. I used to go sit and write in the toilet because with all the brothers in the house, if you're in the toilet, you cannot be disturbed. And it's got a beautiful e e echo, right? Yeah. And so who fostered that in you? You know, you, you, you said you're the youngest of four brothers. Your dad was a, a rugby type. Mm. <clears throat> well, I think that kind of a, a all, all the testosterone in the house um, created a, in, in, in any teenager, it creates, uh, it fosters a wild kind of a rebellious, I was a terrible teenager. <laughs> so, you know, that's what I do. It, it's, and also, you know, the whole, uh, I must say, we also, uh, it was also quite a Christian upbringing, um, Calvinistic. So you get born and you, you basically burn, you get born and you die and you go to hell because of, for the death, because of the sins of your fathers. That's the whole belief. It's like, mm. uh, was awkward. it strict? Yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, I, I, I believe the, the, the human soul, um, reacts towards encampment. You know, and I, I believe in the thing of your, um, the soul's expression. You know, um, that's why freedom of speech and things like that is so important for me. And for artists. Remember, artists always kind of was in the old, in the, say, 20, 30, 40 years ago, was the, bastion of uh, breaking the rules breaking the um, creating new art stuff like that so there is a it feels like there's a drive at the moment to actually find some some forces out there to kind of crush that spirit of individualism about doing research finding out for yourself Do you find still for yourself that music and, and art, fine art, visual art is a medium of, of expression for you for that, in that regard? Well, in a way, I don't, you remember, um, we are, a, we are, artists are a mirror to the, to society in a certain way. And I have to say that I think this, the world is so crazy at the moment that you don't want to be a mirror to society. You almost want to be a form of escapism because you, you, you are as much uh, as a human as, you know what I mean? I don't want to, music that I used to love now, I don't want to listen to anymore because it's like, oh, dude. well, number one, I've killed it. But number two, it's just, um, there's enough violence out there to wanting to hear 90s, Angst. <laughs> yeah. For sure. And when did you realize you were an artist? Was it before you were in the Nude Girls? You know, I found this wonderful thing about art um, and also running um, long distance is that there's no winners. And because everybody is so unique. And your journey, if you go for a run, you don't have to be first, you can come whatever, but for you, for yourself, it's such an accomplishment. 
it is like it's such a high man it's it's it is the closest to what you guys can probably get to who has never been on stage to that exactly that feeling after you've done a good run it's it's almost like fuck yeah mm. it's an adrenaline high it's something big and it feels like you've accomplished something you get you gave it your best you know um so running um does that for me um and um and also in painting there's no I mean, you get people who has made a living today there's i know about people who do like kind of uh, incredibly um, childlike art and it sells for for millions so <laughs> you know, it's it's um you never know everybody is unique there is no winner there is no loser there's only uh, the whole your biggest uh, your biggest enemy is uh, yourself you know you are totally confronted by your own shortcomings sh your own shortcomings constantly um, while you're painting and you you kind of uh you fill it up with all kinds of stuff paintings like it's interesting that you say that how do you how do you deal with those shortcomings confronting you so consciously and focusing on you and your work and not what other people are selling their work for i, I, I when other people sell their, sell their, their work for a lot of money and, and they're successful, it's amazing because it shows what can be done. Um, and, and you want people to do well. And if you keep going, you'll get there as well, man. I mean, if you throw, if you throw enough shit against the wall, something's going to stick. It is true. And I, I really like that outlook. And you also mentioned about your, you know, your own shortcomings, I, I guess your own things coming up whilst you're painting. Yeah, Does that's that more, it, it's, yeah. it's more your, it's more the, I'm still going to fix that eye, don't worry. You know, it, it's a freaking nightmare looking at some of these things. Same as listening to albums. Um, I mean, whenever I listen to an album, I can always hear like, oh, that production. You always listen to the production. You always um sometimes you, you surprise yourself if you haven't listened to an album for a while and you listen to it and, and then suddenly it sounds like quite quite foreign and that's when you can en enjoy it but most of the times you find yourself questioning or you know what i mean what i'm saying how do you know when you're finished then no be because you do it, you, it, 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 the, the painting because eventually the structure the structure gets done right the structure is done and then you you kind of fold the thing or whatever and then everything and but then at the end you do the the jewelry and that is the fun part you know that's like doing special effects for a movie it's fantastic little very small beautiful details and and eventually when you finish with that because it, it, it becomes opulence you know it becomes almost 3d because you keep working into it and into it uh, my old art teacher said to me whenever you think a painting is finished that is when you should really go into it so i i, I tend to still live with that by that rule and you've You've lived, uh, you know, let's say a very fortunate life to have been very successful in, in music and in, in fine art. How have you balanced it? Um, in a way, I mean, fine art, uh, I look, I, uh, I, I'm just, uh, I, for me, it's to a degree, I'm, I'm a student because music, I know I've, I've, we've made th um, I've been part of 13, 14 albums. Now, I mean, we know how to, what to do in the studio. We know how to write a song. A song is easy to write. When it comes to music, <clears throat> I lack in uh, rhythm, you know. I would love to be more. 
<clears throat> more working with more from a rhythm onwards instead of guitar onwards and painting <clears throat> i'm just constantly still <clears throat> learning how to paint a person without a black line around him um i guess i'm a little bit better than that but also not you know really it is still but it's fun and you know i've got a what do you what do they say a queer eye for a, a nice dress I've, I've worn many dresses in my life with the spring mock nude girls and i like colorful things and hopefully um i appeal to somebody's my color maybe my colors might appeal to some people's vibes and tell us about your time in the spring Bok nude girls you were iconic people still have, you know know them know you yeah yeah, so um, we came out at the right time. So basically, as Mandela uh, came out of jail, we were in Stellenbosch around Stellenbosch, which was a student town. And it, it, we were all around the age of 22, 21, 20, maybe, some of them. And then uh, we started a band, and there was this Madiba magic in the air. Then uh, for the first time, our, <clears throat> our music not our music, but South African music wasn't banned from other countries. So with that feeling in mind and with there being such a lot of focus on South Africa in that stage because of Mandela and, and you know, the whole vibe that we didn't go up in flames. So <clears throat> there was a very positive vibe. And then of course, um, so we were at the right place at the right time. We started the Spring Mock Nickels. And um, so every show was a, was a party. It was just wild. And eventually it started out with being paid two beers for a show. And then it just, it just exploded. And eventually we toured with In Excess. was our first international we opened for. And that was really, really fantastic. Every, your, your first of everything is fantastic. The first time you win an award for music, the first time you hear yourself on the radio, the f sometimes they play, I've, I've heard them play. We at, at one stage, they were playing a song that I didn't even, I couldn't even listen to. It. And they were playing it on the radio and I was going, fucking hell, we must be, we must, things are, must be going really well. <laughs> If they're playing that song <laughs> so that was that was fantastic we had our, our day in the sun the 90s you know it's you and your youth um but but in a way we were just almost actors playing out the game as a kind of um just in, indulging in the rock and roll lifestyle because we were naughty children in any way but we survived. Some of us did. Hmm. Well, speaking of rest in peace, Michael Hutchins, how was it playing before in excess and those, what were those experiences like, you know, mm. in, in themselves and also perhaps in shaping you as a person? So I remember we had a party after the, after the one show at the hotel and, um, <clears throat> We had the party there, and I don't know what time we got to bed, two o'clock, but we were just really living it up in a hotel room there. And there were some girls and stuff. It was just, it was just fantastic. And um, the next day I had a massive hangover, and I was there at 11 o'clock in the morning for a sound check. And they were already doing a sound check, Michael Hutchins. And he was singing that, live, baby, live, until the night is over. Right? And he was walking around like fucking Jim Morrison. And he was going, and, and it's, for singers, it's, you've got to really warm your voice up to, to do that. Where you throw your head back and you sing in the air like that. And he was doing it at 11 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, no way. 
That is just... So for me, he was the closest thing to Jim Morrison, um, but just more funkier, you know what I mean? Kick was one of the best albums. It's still one of the best albums. Um, so to have been part of that, I mean, the things were, that was the elegantly wasted tour we did, right? So things were not very, uh, I could see there was trouble in Chinatown, but um, but it did go out with a bang, you know, like, so, <laughs> and he left us with great music and, yeah, it, it's, it, it's, it was one of, I was really sad. It was a month after we, the, the tour ended, he passed away and it, I, I did, I, I, I felt shocked. Mm, and you said he must have been a consummate professional. Do you think that that did change the way you approached what you were doing or was it, you, yes. you, know, you seem to remember, yeah. Whenever you play with these, um, when you play with different artists, you, you see and, and, and you try and take the good stuff with you. Um, but you know what I found is the more successful they are, the more um, the nicer they are. Because they so rich. <laughs> it helps. And tell me, you've got a you know you've got a Rolling Stones uh, t-shirt on, and you've been on the cover of Rolling Stone for as as a musician. This was actually this is... the, the only thing we played. We opened for them in Spain. Yeah. And this is. And the only thing I got from it was this T-shirt. I got a photo as well, but T-shirt. So I sleep in it. So that's why it's all. It looks comfy. It's, it's become my running T-shirt as well. Because yeah. you know that guy, Mick Jagger, he would like run 20 minutes before the show on a treadmill. Really? So we, were, we were told, yeah. I don't, maybe, maybe it's his like, his posse. The the, the 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 stones posse that just like spread these rumors and you go like no way but it's good it's a good rumors because they're like <clears throat> or, or you can check most most singers and rock bands these days are healthier than the queen it's different these days and you mentioned that you do run is that a different kind of outlet for you you said you know art must be an outlet as well or does it feel like work Mm, it's, no, it's not work. It's just that sometimes you, you'd rather be at the end of a painting than the start of a painting. Or in the middle of a, or in the... For, you know, but no, man, it's all cool. Um, running is... I've always done it because I've come from a sporty family. I'm just not good at sport and I don't like to compete. So I love tennis because it's a flippin' awesome game. And then... Um, I love running because it's sometimes you just got to run and keep running. I love the smells and the feeling of it. And, Do you, you know. get inspiration for your painting whilst you're out running? Yes, because you can't, so it takes your mind. If you've got a writer's block or if you're writing crap songs, what you do is you just go for a run because you get so tired that you cannot think about it, about your crappy songs or your painting. And then you, um, so it's a form, it's a forced meditation. It's like jumping in the cold sea. So. And you cold. live by the sea? Yes, I do, but I'm not, a, I'm not into cold water. So I've got the thickest wetsuit there is. And what is cool about it is that you float. So I'm a floater. I've been involved in two life savings because I'm a floater. I throw the guy on my, my boogie board. I swim out to them, throw them my boogie board. Then they can get out and I float around a bit until I float out again by with the wave. So wait, you were saving the person or you have been saved? No, 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 no. I, the, I can see them go out and then people start oh. swimming. So I've got my boogie board, but I know I can float. Yeah. So, I th so I've been involved in saving. Oh, saving, wow. That's uh, two, two lives. This beach in front of us is a little bit uh, wicked. Uh, yeah. There's another singer living around the corner that was also involved, but he had two guys that he had to save, and these guys were starting to drown him because that's what people do. If they panic, 
they push the only thing they can down, you know, mm. it's scary. So speak, well, it's a slight tangent, but you, you just said, you know, you live by the beach, you live in South Africa, you, you were in the nude girls around the time of Mandela's release. So 92, 93, pushing my historical knowledge. 93, Does that, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Does that South Africanism shine through in, in you when you create? Yes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, we've got the, we've got different cultures, so many different cultures, uh, African cultures. And um, mm. you get some of these cultures that does the most brightest, awesomest bungalows, their houses, they that they live in these mud houses and then they paint these things and that they also reflect these kind of very uh dada-ish kind of pop art um, and it, it, they're reflected in their jewelry as well and then they've got these head pieces that's almost like egyptian so there's such a lot of things that that is that surrounds me that is wicked and awesome. You know, in front of us, there's a train coming past, then there's an airplane, then there's like all different cultures and things, and, uh, you know, and, and end of the war, of the, the day, rhythms and music and stuff. So, uh, all of this will definitely influence you. It, 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 it broadens your palate. That was a, that was a good line. I thought that was that was a good line. That's why I let it sit. And I think it also it was a it was a bit of a double entendre. So tell me, living in South Africa, like you said, almost it's a bit of a cliche, but it really is a melting pot of cultures. And that's rubbed off on you. And you've sung in English, sung in Afrikaans, and you paint. Is there a confluence between your music and your painting, or do you see them as separate entities? They um, sometimes have the same kind of um, storylines. Sometimes a uh, thing can be quite bright, but it's got a very dark storyline. <coughs> and, um, and that is cool. That comes out. That was quite a... I mean, a lot of the Springbok Google songs sound very angry. But you've got to juxtaposition it with not being... Your, Otherwise, it's too typical. So, I mean, I, I, I love, um, you know, like good comedy, man. If you, if, if you understand it, it means you're adding things from different things together that's either really bad taste or genius or waste of time. So just, uh, so, um, you know, I, I dabble in that. It's a form of, uh, a form of gambling. And I've got an addiction with gambling. No, I don't, actually. I get depressed when I go into, into those, what do you call them? You know, casinos. <clears throat> oh, it depresses me. When you say that, though, it's interesting. Is it? Does it feel like a, a psychological gamble? Like, pe are people going to like this? I feel passionate about this. What's going to happen when it goes out into the world? You can see it as a gamble, but you can also see it as I'm keeping myself busy and loving what I'm doing. So it's, uh, I, I really believe that money is irrelevant when it comes to doing what you love. Money will come eventually. The better mm. you get at what at what you love. And tell us about that as an artist. Like you said, you you need to stay authentic, but we need money to live. You you know you've earned money from music. You've sold artwork. I've, I've been one of the lucky ones, yeah. I've and do you really think really about it while you're creating? Of, of what? Maybe someone would pay for this or is it not what you think about whilst you're creating? Nah. No, I'm just trying not to vomit, you know what I mean? I must just try and make it look nice. You just got to try how, and make it look nice. 
For sure. And we can see some art behind you. We're going to look at some of the art that you've put, put you oh. know, that's been digitised and we'll look at it soon. But I'm curious, how do you know that it looks nice? When you, How did you realise that, hey, I can paint? Um, because, you, you know, you're using things that you're pushing around things that's already created for you, the colours and the oils and stuff. So it, my mum used to do a lot of um, flower, um, what do you call it when you do when you do the flowers at weddings and stuff? Anyway, stuff like that. And then you, you just play around with, with colours and stuff until it looks right, until there's balance. You know, so there's, of course, there's, all, there's so many variables. It's a mathematical equation. And did you start getting more into it when you started your solo career as a singer? Yes. No, the nude girls, it was too wild. We, yeah. We did, not, we did not have, I did not have time for painting. And we had other, we had more important things to do. We had music, partying, <laughs> and more music. Exactly. Why, before we move out, move along, are you friends with some of them still? Why, why did it all end after six, seven years? Um, we we kind of reached the ceiling in South Africa, so we had to move to New York. And um, the bass guitarist already had a wife and a kid. And some of the guy like some of the guys, the wheels were coming off a bit. You know. It was just uh, with, with drugs. So I don't think it would have gone, I don't know how, well, maybe. But anyway, so I was 27 then, I think. And then I, um, so we just all said, no, let's just leave it. And then I, I, I um, of course, I, it's just a normal thing. I went solo and that went spectacularly well. For um, and then five years later, the nude girls we like got back together again and did two more albums. And the la and our last album we bought out about three years ago, and that <clears throat> party apocalypse and that got a Salma award. So, at least we were, you know, you never that might be our last album, although we did go the other day and we did some more songwriting, but it's such a different world that. Everybody is surviving, and also as a band, <clears throat> we only play if, there's, if it's like a really, really awesome show. It's not like there is a, you know, it's a different world. And I, for example, I, I'm also a father like yourself, and I sh show my kids in excess. I need to show them Arno Carstens, but I've. So they really like In Excess. In fact, they, like you said, they love the album Kick. So it's really staying the times. Do kids know Arno Carstens? Do kids know the Spring, Springbok Nude Girls? What's yeah. it like living in South Africa? What's it like living in South Africa where you are, where you are an icon, but you're a person, you're a real person, you've got feelings? Like, is it, how do people balance that? You, you know, walking down the street, I'm sure people recognize you. Um, South Africans are. It's not like in Europe or in America. It's not like crazy. I think in the nineties it was a bit crazy, but um, I'm also like fifty-two years old, so it's you. You look I, good. I, I take things so in my like I cannot give a fuck. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's wonderful. I'm so I'm just glad I'm still alive. You know, like so. Yeah. Whatever is now is a bonus. So I'm just as nice as can be to everybody around me and thankful. And um, bec I'm, I've got such an awesome um, infrastructure here in South Africa with all my friends. We've got all, we've got all the top artists, all the top studios, all the is at our fingertips. So. Although South Africa has got a lot of problems and a lot of people has left the country and is, I mean, half of the South Africa is in Australia and, or New Zealand yeah. as well. And, you know, um, the thing is for me, 
I've got a massive infrastructure. So there's no, if I must go to Australia now, I mean, I'll be so lost. Um, it, it just won't make any sense. So um, I like the, there's a wild, there's an element of wild waste in, in, in Africa and in South Africa because we're so far behind the rest of the world. But then again, our banking system is way ahead of some countries again. So it is this, we're in a country that's half very first world, half very third world. Um, and I'm sure you, I mean, you guys have experienced that as well, where it's, it's two worlds living next to each other. Um, and you know, that is a, 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 a very interesting, that is a different conversation, you know, but it's, it's, you're confronted with all these dichotomies and all these contradictions of, um, you feeling good and life is good. But I must say, I'm, I've got a lot of friends at the moment that's struggling. The world is really tough at the moment. And do you think that that comes out in your art? Let's pull up some of what you've created and put on Bitcoin and then we're going to... Oh, you've got it, in. yeah. Yeah, we're going to dive into why it's important as well because it really pertains to your artistic career. But these are some prints, so these are based on originals that are on Bitcoin and these are additions that have been able to be collected on Bitcoin. And then we'll look at some of your other work. Let's look at this middle one first because Summer's Dream I know is based on South Africa. I've read the description. I should yeah. ask about it the other day. So your South Africanism is coming out in your work in this piece, for example. Yes. Um, like, so... Where I, where I live is like surround the, 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 the town Vusta is surrounded by mountains. So it's almost like in a, like a very broad crater. So it's a little, I, I like, and the whole thing about the, I love the Japanese influence as well as those mountains. And, and then the, uh, you know, there's, um, there used to be leopards in the mountain and stuff. And now, uh, those flowers are in our garden. I grew up with those flowers and they're everywhere. Is it Stilitsius? I'm not so, so I can't remember. But they are they're stunning. Have you guys got them? I'm not sure. They don't they don't, I don't recognize them. Let me see if I can anyway, I will I will I will I will uh, I'll send you the correct name of them and they're really stunning. Yeah. And tell me, so, you know, in all of these works, and we can see that you, you do paint figurative, figuratively, pardon me, I can, but obviously the one on the left, yeah. there's that abstract nature to it. Have you got I a style? The two, the two girls? Yeah. Sweet Embrace. Have you got a style or does it vary? No. The thing is, I do like cubism. I like futurism. I play around with everything I like. I'm most uh, to... For me to fit into anything, expressionism with a hint of surrealism, but you know that. So that's a bit of cubism mixed in, um, probably influenced by there's a South African artist called Pirnev that was used to do these uh, landscapes and he would put it into blocks and with these incredible stuff. Uh, and then, you know, the one on the, the right, I can't read that. It's so small. What does it say? Believe. Believe. I, I did a series of those type of paintings, which is because of, I like the old farmhouses, where they've got that old off-white enamel type of paint, you know, it's like, um, and I thought to do, I could see those type of paintings in those old farmhouses. If you embrace it and you, <clears throat> it was something just so classic about that color. Is, um, so I did the spray paint, the colors. It's not exactly the same one. It's a bit warmer. Uh, I will do the background with spray paint and then I will um, do the figures with oil and pencil and charcoal and then you see the blotch of, of of color in the middle for where the prayers happen 
And it seems like you think a lot about the materials that you're using. Do you have, is there a quality of material that you really like to use? Do you, how do you decide? Well, so my friend Lionel Smith, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a superstar painter. He is. So he gives me all his off cuts, uh, his, his empty oils. I could squirt out a little bit more out of it because oils are super expensive. Mm -hmm. And um, I love a spray paint. I can always grow much more. And, you know, I, I need to go do some kind of a video, a YouTube video about spray paint. But anyway, I do, I do play with spray paint and then you mix. But you can, you can, you cannot spray paint over oil, but you can paint oil over spray paint. Okay. So and is that something a little bit of planning? That's what I was gonna say. Is it something that you've learned through trial and error or is it taught? Uh, so basically I uh, um two years before uh, COVID I went to so I started working every Monday with Lionel at his studio. And uh, so we just talked um did mushrooms and smoked herb <laughs> and talked about things and just ideas and because this guy is super successful and he mm -hmm. not that success is the thing but his, his success has given him the opportunity to be doing this for many years so he's got so many tricks of the trade and to just i i also used to paint with my art teacher um, like um just him and me and a bottle of wine and i know that sounds quite scaly but it wasn't um we would awesome times you know um it's amazing what a good teacher can do for you uh, so i love to surround myself with interesting people and people you can you can learn from people that's better than you and they are everywhere mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. fantastic you have to be in inspired by other people and other artists and and you know um, because i haven't been painting for so many years um I don't have a, a certain style. I know that um, I try my best at doing my thingy, but once you look at it all together, there's a style. You know, you can't deny there is a style, but it's not like you are, oh, this is my style. It just happens to happen like that. So, um, you know, I, it's... At, I'm not at a place where I'm making statements in my art necessarily. It's not for me about that. It's for me about learning how to paint and constantly learning how to be a better painter. If I come up with some cool concept, then so be it. I find some photos on the internet that I find really um, interesting and beautiful and disturbing. And I, I sometimes take it and I paint it. And I, there's this one fantastic one where the girl walks away with a little dog. And that was when they, when Russia invaded uh, Ukraine. And she was fleeing with a town with her two cats and a little dog. And it's my, actually one of my favorite paintings. Somebody just took, you know, it was, I know it's here behind me somewhere. And so these paintings, they're, they're originally, or well, they are oils, they're, they exist physically and they've been inscribed onto Bitcoin, which means that they've been written on chain, you know, the file is preserved on the internet, so to speak. How yeah. important is that? Yeah, how important is that for you as an artist? For a couple of reasons. One, because physical art is so ephemeral. Uh, you know, a house could burn down, we could lose our physical items. But also for the fact that you now have a global audience you know that the art has been preserved. You can get royalties on your art. There's a lot to it. You know, for me, music royalties um, that you've been paying record companies has been a pain in the butt for many years. And now they don't do anything and they still take 50%. It's, mm. it's just ridiculous. And, and people hire the song from you. They don't even buy it. Mm -hmm. So then... And now with painting, 
that's why I don't really do exhibitions. I'm not really into it. I mean, I love doing music shows and exhibition together in a beautiful venue. Mm -hmm. Because then it's a happening. Uh, it's, I don't like... Because if you do it in, in a gallery, you sometimes have to pay a gallery 50, up to 50%. So I've already been had, I've already been diddied by the record companies. Now, I don't want to get diddied by the galleries as well. So for me, as an artist, my future lies online, uh, selling my paintings. That's where I've been selling my paintings anyway. And... Um, um, look, it's it's not hundred percent cooking yet, mm -hmm. but it's 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 good. It's a way to get your paintings out there to actually popify it, and that is what NFTs and ordinals are as well. It's it, uh, it gives me an opportunity to popify my to bring up my 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 uh, graphic art side. And I can I can rework it on the on the computer, and I can bring my paintings alive, and that's why I love NFTs. Ordinals is amazing for its permanence, mm -hmm. and I appreciate it for that. But um, because it's not as fun as as NFTs, um, but you know, as long as these things are, are sort of close, like I, I like it that it's on Bitcoin. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. I think that that's really well said. And like you said, obviously, I haven't got them now, but I can see if I can find them. You're, you've put NFTs on stacks, which are then secured by Bitcoin. The artwork that we're looking at here is directly on Bitcoin, which is quite incredible. Is that something that an artist and for yourself feels good in terms of the fact that you know that they do essentially live on forever or as for as long as Bitcoin exists? Um, for me, I don't think about forever. It's irrelevant. Um, mm -hmm. me, uh, I just like it that it is new. It is exciting. It's new technology. You want to be, uh, and in a stagnant world of the same old, same old, my my inner punk wants to decentralize everything. And I, I'm the year for soul's expression. And this, you know, as a musician, you have merchandise, you sell your CDs, your T-shirts, your what, 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 with your shows. For as a painter, you sell out your paintings and you could do it. Your, you could do prints. Depends on what you do. You could do a lot of other things. But the fact is, this is for me a different way uh, uh, of making, of course, extra bucks. But besides that, I love bringing my paintings to life through the uh, through digi digital kind of stock animation. You know, stop start animation kind of ideas. Well, let's look at it. Well, there's been more than one interesting one, but let's look at quite an interesting one, one called Psychedelic Night Out. Now, this one's made up of a number of frames to create a <laughs> GIF. Oh, lovely. Do you know how long it took me to do that? Well, you could go for it. Weeks and weeks and weeks. I'm talking about the little digital thingies. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic, man. It's a, fucking, it's a joy for my eye. I would like to see, um, I'm definitely, I've never been to, my work has been part of a couple of exhibitions, in, in, you know, NFT and exhibition, but I would love to be there to see it. Because that'll be, you know what I mean? I was watching Chemical Brothers the other day at uh, Isle of Wight Festival, and their, um, their visuals is mind-blowing. I mean... Just incredible. So I'm starting to think. Plus, I've also been getting into editing my own music videos now. So there's new things connecting in my brain to all of this is about to change. Well, you just answered a question that I wanted to ask, but I want you to elaborate on it. 
it seems to have stimulated something new in you. You know, you, you, you put it on the iPad and you can digitize it. You can edit it. You can change it. Like you said, you can add the jewelry to it. And now you want to perhaps create your own visuals for your music. Has it been stimulating? Has it renewed any of the vitality or you, not that you'd lost it? I think it definitely um, doing these NFTs has, has made me braver to just say, you know what, because for years I've been sitting with the editors who were doing videos and I always go like, but you know what, I wish I could just do it myself because you're just fucking around, you know. But so eventually the other day I said, give me the bigger, so I got um, Da Vinci, I downloaded it and I just thought, because I see also I'm, by, my, by my son and we come from a generation where, oh, it's a big thing to learn something new and stuff but the kids my son i see him if he doesn't know how to do it he just youtubes it and there he goes and it's fantastic and um i also see i also saw lionel smith be, being like that and um so it's inspirational to work with people like that because um you got to change your ways of, you got to change your ways of working um to move on and be an early starter and and now I would just love to inspire more musicians to, to start selling their music on NFTs. Mm -hmm. That is, a, I, 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 the thing is, the NFT has got more worth than your song. <laughs> so it's, a, it's obvious, it's like a no-brainer. So what I did with my last album is I recorded my whole album live. I did a live version of it, then I mixed some of them because I just lost interest. I did two songs. Uh, okay, so did a video for it, the live take because we had a green screen behind us, and then we so we got made a video for the live take, sold that as a as an NFT, and then I sold about a hundred versions of the songs as an NFT, and that was enough to record another song. At the end of the day, these days, you will spend 120,000 Rand, which is almost $2. Um, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. But anyway, and uh, you will spend that and you'll make back 300 Rand. I mean, it's ridiculous. The whole the digital revolution is totally killed the music industry um yes i live in heaven now because i can listen to music for free so my musical my music nerdy side is in seventh heaven but the reality is that it's flooded the world with really crap shit music and then also killed potentially very good bands and an industry but um they so I think there's a, there's a place for change in the music industry. Web3 might be the answer for that. Yeah, it might be the answer, I think, is well put. Where did it go wrong and then where where does it need to improve and how can Web3 help with that? A kind of a human accountability factor. Um, you know, just because you can walk through with your ideas through the fire it's not, not maybe the best idea and you know the way how this thing is seen and sold um the music industry from the beginning was run by fucking questionable figures mm -hmm. you know? Then somebody came and said, listen, it's absolute and you're either going to play worth or we're just going to totally ignore you in any way and do it. Then they made some shitty deals. So it, it is just, a, it's a cacophony. It is, you know, I, I know enough about it to, to kind of be worried for the industry. But there's like in any situation, there's so many factors. Remember, we also came from different times. I mean, we would sign these record deals and these record deals would be shite. But you're in that time of, well, you know, 
that's the way you get onto radio and TV, and because if you if you're with the name of a big record company, or and now it's the time to get the to get that out of the way because you don't need them anymore. But it also means there's no more real bands anymore. Like the bands now, you get a lot of solo artists. It's too expensive for bands to tour. It's so if you look on what's happening in the music world now, it's just solo artists almost. I mean, I know about two bands that I really love that don't play anymore because it's just like flying five people around, hotels. It's the world is, you know what I'm saying? Everything has gotten very expensive, right? It's not like people's got more money to go and party. Party. So how do we fix it? Um, well, we try not to nuke each other, number one. That would be a good one. Mm. And then um, basically, um, I think new ways, we introduce new ways to, to make it all more fair. You should be paid for what you create. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Remember, when we had CDs, when we were selling CDs, you would, a big percentage of the money that you were giving the record company was because of the physical thing, the plastic, the artwork, the, and getting it everywhere. So there was worth for your, now people are not buying it. Like I say, it's streaming, it's just hiring it. And they still take ridiculous amounts of that 0.02% but I don't give a fuck about the record companies, really. Um, luckily, I've I've now been doing a lot of stuff on my own. It also gives me more freedom to do stuff like the NFTs. With a big record company, you won't be able to do that yet. Yet, I see such a big, amazing... Imagine, the whole thing is, if you want to see that video that I sold to that guy, that NFT, you can, must go to his portal and watch it. So imagine Beyonce brings out a new song. She sells it uh, to Mercedes Benz. So now everybody's got to go to fucking Mercedes Benz portal to check her new video. I mean, that's these ways to monetize this new world. It makes sense. And we haven't brought her up yet, but it will be remiss of us, very remiss of us not to. Your lovely wife, uh, we'll call her Good Kitty. We don't have to, but you, you know, uh, Samantha Fox. Yeah, your lovely wife, Samantha Fox. But your lovely wife, who's <laughs> been very, very influential, impactful on your uh, transition into the space, but also supporting you throughout your career. She's been very impactful on my transition. <laughs> She's been very, but like you said, Lionel Smith has been a mentor. You've had other mentors, but. Yes. You obviously, you know, everyone needs a strong person in their life to support, whether it's their wife, their husband, whoever. Good kitty How is amazing. Uh, look, if it wasn't for her, I'll still be sleeping on my brother's flea-infested bed. But, um, no, you know what? I, got to, I just got very lucky. I'm sorry. So... She's the keeper of my sanity and I'm the keeper of hers. And has that helped you throughout your whole career as a person and as an artist? Um, yes. I mean, we've been touring together from, uh, geez, well, since we met, she's, we, we, we went to go live in the, U, in the UK and she's been everywhere with me, like on all the tours and stuff. Not always, but um, now she's sick of it. But we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun, especially when we did Europe. Then, uh, you know, she will come with everywhere. Uh, we toured with Simple Minds and Ultra Vox and Paolo Nettini. And so then you're just a supporting act. So that's fantastic. So you get, a, you get to watch the show and we get a whole uh, um, band rider. So they made the mistake to give us the whole band rider, which means bottle of whiskey, bottle of Jägermeister, bottle of vodka, a crate of beer and wine. 
And every night, me and her and my guitarist will like drink all of it and watch the band, but only half of the show because we'll get so. F then we'll just go home. But it, it was so much fun. And we, we, we just took the last of our money, we just blasted it all. And then we just took a, a big holiday through Europe, you know. That's a big thing about if you're South African is you never get, it feels like you're quite stuck in the southern point of Africa. And uh, it, you feel very, um, you're not part of the world, you know, because everything happens up there. Um, so us Southerners, it, there's a different vibe here, you know, there's a different, Kind of a desolate. I'm sure you you know what I'm talking about. Well, living in Australia, we're very it's 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 fairly remote. So I, I you know, you must know what I kind of think. Yeah, there's a kind of a you when you sit in the open nothing and there's just nothing around you and and the and the the, the branches and the, the little breeze. You go, oh fuck my life. I kind of <laughs> love it. No, I do too. The older I get, I love it. But when I was younger, I used to like, mm. oh man, this is driving me mad. <laughs> but now I love it. <clears throat> Has becoming a parent changed you as an artist? Um, yes, um, definitely. Um, I've become aware of the fact that it disturbs in certain things you know, that we as a community, we take for granted, you know, that's the way the world is. You know. <laughs> but these kids are actually super innocent. Um, I mean, and so I try, so I think I'm, well, I'm definitely not going to look in the 90s, we were singing about demons and stuff, but that was also the 90s. Demon, demon, I did us and demons and whatever and you know all over the place but it's a different world now and like I say the world is so so um, aggressive that I don't um, I like to surround our little cocoon and what we live with kind of so we watch Survivor that's wholesome and your 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 music the genre, I suppose, the way in which you performed and sang changed a lot from Springbok Nude Girls to your solo stuff. Um, yes, because uh, the Nude Girls was quite um, shouty and we were younger, wilder, much more punky, more rock, more alternative, faster. And um, I love it. It's a workout. Even now, so when we do it, I, oh, man, you got to maybe warm up a bit, but it's fantastic. It feels like I need to... Hit, uh, knee pads, elbow pads, and maybe a gum guard, but it's fantastic. And then, the, but my solo career, I saw as a that is where I do my acoustic songwriting kind of stuff, and I, my more poppy kind of sensibility stuff that that won't fit in with Theo's heavy guitaring of the Nude Girls. I, I'm also, you know, I'm a closet '80s queen, and I love my uh, Depeche Mode and. Uh, so I don't like loops. I like it when you're actually playing the electronic uh, drums and it feels it's more real, you know what I mean? So, uh, anyway. Um, yeah, so, so I, I get my kicks in different things. I'm glad you said to Pesh Mode, I want to know who else you listen to or who, what other musicians well, or bands. I was, I've been a massive, my biggest guy I loved for all the years is Nick Cave, the band mm. of Bad Seeds. But I'm um, slowly but surely, I, I can't do as much of it anymore. Um, I like this start from uh, a neither from Nederland. I was about there's a band called The Start, which is fantastic. Um, I, I love it that Kings of Leon brought out a really good album this year. I'm, I'm enjoying the new Cure. Um, you know, I make, I make playlists every two weeks because mm -hmm. I, I, I think radio sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I just hate the music they're playing on radio. Anyway, so that keeps me going for two weeks. It's all like new music and stuff um, that I like. Singer, songwriter. 
kind of stuff and then also electronica some really rock stuff whatever there's not a lot of good rock music anymore unfortunately i'm bringing out a, a rock album in october supposed to be probably a mm. year later that me and this other guy did it's super um extreme sports style music you're gonna love it that's exciting yeah when did you start that? We did it last year. Um, the guy's very erratic. So I said, look, man, I'll just come to your studio and then I'll just write some stuff and sing it. And uh, we literally did the whole album in two days. I did the vocals. And it's wild, wild stuff. So that's fun. And you I still got a big kick out of it? Yeah, man, I get a, lot, a big kick out of it. And the fact is we, we're doing a lot of projects these days because I can't sit around being a musician waiting for a band to bring out an album every four years or solo act. So I bring out, so now I'm going to start working on my next English album and I've already written a lot of nudical stuff. So I'm all right with that. And then I'll do another little Afrikaans ditty, you know, bring a little Afrikaans project out, like five songs or something every now and then. I like, I don't want to do loads and loads and loads of Afrikaans because I like to keep it kind of, you know, kind of niche for myself because then it will always kind of stay a bit fresh for me doing it in that language. Do you write differently when you're writing in, and singing in Afrikaans? Yeah, I think you sing at a lower voice because it's you're used to talking the voice, the language. So it's like uh, 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 uh. when do you speak <laughs> Afrikaans these days? When I'm angry. Um, when um, uh, every now and then um, I speak it a lot. I speak it to my mom. These, you know, I I, I don't even realize, but. It, Half of your day is Afrikaans kind of things. It's like Norwegian, like Norway. They've got their language and they've got English as well. So, but I mean, yeah, we have Kosa Zulu, Afrikaans, Sutu, whatever, and English. And is there any of that that, like I said before, that translates into your visual art? Um, yeah. No, like I said, the color usage, um, some type of looseness, Africa looseness, you know, Nigerian movie posters. Have you seen them? Mm -hmm. I find there's a sense of humor there and a sense of, uh, Endear, it's endearing. Endear, you know what I mean? It's there's an innocence of beauty that I enjoy in the kind of um, well, probably my unsophisticatedness. Um, the fact is, even in the nineties, man, I if I would sing, if I do bad, uh, if I'd sing a bad note. In my head, I will just go, oh, no, okay, that's all right. You can just say it was alternative. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was al It's alternative. It's all right. We'll, we'll live. <laughs> In the meantime, this is terrible singing. Um, so, yeah. you know, we, 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 we all polish, polish it. Polish it well. Do you ever listen back to songs that you've written and think, wow, I don't remember sounding like that or saying that? Or is it all good memories? Um, no. Like one of my big, biggest songs is I, I, I somehow was in this weird headspace of doing different personalities and singing my verses just, just to cover all bases of how you can do it, to give my all. And eventually it sounded like I was... <laughs> I built the song out of this, you know, the first verse out of a couple of takes and it sounded like I was weird schizophrenia, uh, like schizophrenic uh, Arkham Asylum 
in might. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun. I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it a secret which song it is. We'll have to go. Someone will have to go investigate. And like you just said, it's fun. I've seen. Well, we've spoken before. You're a fun guy, but I've seen you on on stage and I've heard you have a very powerful voice. Are you the same person on stage or do you become something else? Um, I'm pretty much the same person. Um, uh, 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 yeah, I'm becoming more and more the same person. I used to be more fly on the wall vibe because when I used to drink, we get so fucked up. So you're so loud and embarrass me, embarrassing. And then when you need to be in work situations, you've got such a hangover and you're hanging out with these people who you're supposed to be doing kind of big business deals and stuff, but you are like so quiet, weirded out by your own, you know, you hang over, you're insecure, you're young and you're like a fucking loser, but you're not a loser. You're doing well, but you could be so you could be doing so much better if you're not hangover and actually doing a deal but then again it was all part of a if i look back at it it was a funny movie it was a great funny movie and there was a lot of uh, there was some serious success but if mm -hmm. you look at it i think all bands it looks a little bit like spinal tap and there's a good... always a there's a bit lot there's a lot of spinal tap in all bands i believe that's fun though. And what about on the fine art side though? Is it, have you found it's a little bit more of a, a serious place to reside as a, as a career you're selling, selling oils to people? You know, um, it, it, it is a place where I would not like to shine. Um, I'd like, of course, I would love success in it, but it's not a world in which I want to partake because I found, I find that, the optics of this world is pretentious. Uh, it's got a history of pretentiousness. So mm -hmm. which, I just don't have time for that at all anymore. So um, it doesn't bother me. Uh, I, I enjoy artists. I've got many artist friends and I find them entertaining. And it's, it's never the box of chocolates you think they are. And um, I, I love hanging out with them. But some of them are so down to earth and some of them are so flamboyant and it, it takes all kinds to make the world go around. Every, uh, and I think it was Dave Grohl who said that every, uh, every band, not all bands have to be massive. Not all musicians has to be superstars. Everybody's got their own journey. Same goes for artists as well. My, my journey is doing... I, I love the little bit of the success I get from any of doing NFTs and the whole community and it's a vibrant community. Although I've been doing music for 30 years, I've had more international exposure through NFTs than what I've had through my music. So for me, it's a, it's a little bit of a, it's, it's a little light at the end of a, a tunnel that didn't exist before. That's really well put. And on that, and, and you said with your art, <laughs> good kitty and I joke, but I don't think she believes me. So you, you paint a lot of women, but you paint many things, but you do paint a lot of women. What do you, what is it about the female form or women or who, who is it? Is it inspired by your beautiful wife or where does that come from? You, you know, you, I'm sure you met a lot of beautiful women when you're a musician, but really, oh, I, you know, jokes aside. Oh, 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 no, no, Brit, I've got, I've got an eye for a beautiful woman. I yeah. Mean, uh, I, I've, got a, I've got an eye for a beautiful woman. So um, basically, I, I check out, I follow nude art, nude picture stuff, um, photographers, mm. all stuff like that. And then I kind of collage together kind of beautiful things yeah. and I take I take it from there because I was I was and that yeah. helps me and because at least then they have got now something to now uh 
it's either still life or a little bit of a landscape or but you've got to get structure it's it's sometimes awesome to be very expressionistic and just go wow 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 and it works but for some people that's what they do i like to kind of spend a bit of time I definitely uh, jested a little bit on purpose there, but I, I was curious, is it, do you find the female form, like you said, that figurative approach, something that stimulates you to, to paint and that you feel like you paint well and then you can express yourself? Well, the thing is, if I'm going to paint something, I want to paint something beautiful, right? Yeah. And the whole idea is to create something beautiful. So for me, the female form is beautiful. Um, yeah, maybe it's got to do with the fact that I'm straight, but it's not a sexual thing. I, I no. just think female form is beautiful. I, I, I know it is a bit weird to have, a, a, I don't do nipples because I do find it weird. I remember I've been in people's houses with a lot of nude paintings and then you're like freaked out of it. So I became aware of it. My wife told me, listen, chill out with the nipples around the sun and the bush and the bush you know what i mean so i had to pull back a little bit but um that's why um uh, but it's a portraiture isn't it you see so i do some kind of yeah just abstracting more stuff as well and do you plan that or where did for let's look at that one and just for example, like, when, do you remember, like, I'm, did you have a thought on what you were going to paint or did that just happen? No, I think I just did a, a, a splash of um, the green paint. And then it's in that form. And then I thought, oh, head, 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 head. and then it sort of came out. And it's, you know, kind of, I, I mean, like I say, I do love comic book art. Um. You you know, um, the grossy to them, kind of a bit gross. It can be a bit horror, but I like the, the juxtaposition with the green. Hmm. I love this one as well. There's something, the figure in the background, a face with the moonlight. Anyway, I love these. And you, that's great to hear that you love your own art. Do you ever find that you can't part with it? Um, you feel a little bit like... The first time when we left for London, we had to give our dog, dogs away. So there's a little bit of that feeling where you just look at it go and then go, bye. And then that's it. Yeah, it's like one of your children. There's, yeah. a, certain, there's a certain relationship. But you're not going to sell uh, your child, but I, I, <laughs> I know no, what your, you mean. Your, no, your dog. Yeah, I had to give my dog away, not a child. No, no, I know. And so, Arno, someone wants to become. I hear what artist. you're saying about the child. I now catch. Sorry, I'm. Blonde. You got me. You got I'm me. Blonde. Yeah. So, somebody wants to become a musician, or somebody wants to become a, a painter, an illustrator, whatever. What do you tell them? Um. Well, in, there's a lot of very talented people who live with their pa parents, right? So do not think that talent is your thing. It's, it's a bonus, but there's a lot of people who don't have as much talent as very talented people that's much more successful. Um, this is in all spheres of the, the art world. So it, it is about your work ethic, about your vision, about what you want, and about a hunger. And um, and uh, the more you do it, I mean, if you just do art, I mean, of course, you wake up every day and you should start with just doing a quick, uh, a quick um, figure figure drawing. Of course, it's amazing. You can in two weeks how quickly you get better at figure drawing is incredible. You see yourself literally getting back there like every day. It's it's very nourishing. It's like cleaning a dirty kitchen. 
you get that sensation afterwards. I know what you mean. It's interesting that you say if you do something for five minutes a day, which is not a big part of your day, but it takes commitment. You know, at the end of the year, you've done 365 times five. So, you know, 1,800 odd minutes. But you see, I think I'm, 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 I'm addicted to creating stuff. Because you, mm. get a kick, you get a kick out of creating stuff. You know, it's just... Um, oh. And how have you maintained that hunger? How have I maintained the hunger? Look at that. By... There's a lot happening. There is. That's gorgeous. So I've got this NFT. I'm working on this NFT. It's going to be fantastic. It's actually done already. I've got a couple of cool NFTs coming out. You know, because obviously I haven't brought out for a while. So I've got a, about six, seven cool stuff. I was going to say what's next. Is that what's next? Um, yes, the rock album at the end of the year, the more NFTs. Uh, the NFT, big NFT collection and ordinals coming now. We, everybody's been waiting for the Ishitoshi upgrade. Nakamoto. <laughs> very, very close. So close. So close. And music? Good kitties. You're, yeah. You've got a song on the album? Look, I've just brought out this Afrikaans project and then I'm bringing out the, the rock. Oh, yes, then Good kitties. Hmm. Breaking the Walls. <clears throat> yep. It's an awesome album. Josie Fields, all the other artists on it is Jacques Moulman. Oh my God. It's actually a surprise, surprise, fantastic album. Ads on it, your old friend? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have, have you heard it? I've, I've been lucky enough to hear it. So it's, uh, it's quite mind blowing, really, that that's going to be yeah. coming to NFT land. I've got more great artists for the next one for you guys. So, and then and basically then trying to get uh, my music friends to, you know, this is such a good move to get them onto the NFT stuff. And it's when to get more and more on so we can, because obviously the more fa fans we get involved, we can get in a couple of hundred thousand people and that'd be fantastic. That's how we have to grow. So the more artists on Bitcoin and the more artists on Stacks, both for visual art and music, yeah, that's that's the way I know. Yeah. I've had an absolute ball chatting with you. I could keep going, but we should cut it there. I think that's a perfect place to end. I think, like you said earlier, ah. oh, my. this this is the way to grow it. This is and you know to, what I've got now. I've got podcast ass, podcast ass, lame ass. Dead ass. Podcast and, dead ass. <laughs> and this is the studio. Is this the new studio? Yeah. Oh, man. I like it. Well, thank you so much, Arno, and appreciate your time. Wait, wait, wait. We're not done yet. We're going for music. All right. For, let's do it. music outro. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Oh, what was, what was that? Oh, hello. for an outro.